Karthik, a tough loss for Gonzaga this evening. They made an improbable comeback only to fall short. Yeah, this team's been close all season, really a brotherhood, and I don't think it showed as much as it did all season as it did tonight. Players came off the court crying like Brandon Clark and Zach Norvell Jr. just in full tears. I think the one shining moment there after the game was Gino Crandall telling Zach Norvell Jr. to keep his head up high and keep in high spirits, but the emotions of this game certainly carried over into the locker room. How much has this team meant to you? Everything. We did everything, you know, for each other, with each other. Uh, hang out every day, you know, even on the road at home too. So I'm just missing not playing for, for a higher reason. You know, I don't know if it'll be like that you know, anywhere else or at the next level. Uh, so I'll just forever cherish, you know, the love, you know, playing for love and playing with these dudes. Uh, just the most fun I had playing with a group of guys in my life. Uh, you know, off the court, on the court, you know, these guys were amazing. You know, my brothers for life. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a tremendous season. It, it, it's just been, it's been amazing, honestly. And, and, I mean, I don't even know how to put it other than there's just so much love in this room. And, you know, I've, I've got 14 guys that I can call my brothers for the rest of my life. You know, the coaching staff is obviously will be mentors to me forever. And um, it's been, just been amazing to be a part of. I mean, uh, it's like family, you know. Everybody's so close together. We're all brothers. And uh, stuff to, you know, end it here, you know. Uh, we might not, we might not play, you know, together next season. So stuff to be separated like that, and I just really, really loved them, and it was a a great season to play with them. You know, I just knew it was uh, most most likely the end of my career here. Um, I'm just, I knew it was just going to be my last time playing with you know some of some of those guys. So obviously, it's something that you know I didn't like feeling, but. Um, uh, just you know, we just really had high hopes that we wouldn't make it past this game. So, uh, just kind of hurt a little bit. If you noticed at the beginning of Brandon Clark's soundbite, he said he was crying while leaving the court because it is most likely the end of his Gonzaga career. So, if anybody had any questions about what Brandon Clark is doing next, probably your answer is right there. Yeah. One player that's not going to be on the court next year probably had the most game-defining play in this one. Josh Perkins' technical foul is the play that everyone's going to be talking about when this one's all said and done, and that he was very emotional in the locker room after the game. When you hear them call a technical, what's going through your brain? Awesome. Just automatically, you know, thought it was my fault again. Yeah, no, I definitely hit him. Um, but he was ball faking a lot, and I thought he ball faked, you know, right in front of me. And I guess, you know, instincts you know, kicked in, and I just tried to swipe it away. Didn't really know the, you know, the rules on that one. So uh, something I have to live with for the rest of my life. Here's the kicker, Matt Mooney, the person who was inbounding the ball for Texas Tech, told reporters after the game that if Josh hadn't have fouled him there, they probably were going to commit a turnover, uh, either in terms of throwing the ball away or a five-second count. So just an absolutely detrimental play. Before that technical, though, Texas Tech was really having their way with the Zags, both on offense and defense. Yeah, when you look at the Red Raiders, a lot of people talk about their defense, but it was their offense that was also a big part of this game. They made a lot of big buckets and big moments that really helped propel them. Uh, one made three-pointer by Davide Moretti uh, that made the score 66-60, to 60, I believe, with one minute, four 46 seconds left really helped uh, the Raiders put Gonzaga away in this one and the Zags would have to work fast after that even before that Texas Tech was making a lot of big shots and they were really going stride for stride with Gonzaga I mean Gonzaga that team that everyone thinks about as being the good shot making team Texas Tech was right there with them and then on defense they just absolutely wreaked havoc uh, a lot of it just came from forcing turnovers. They had 16 turnovers and got 17 points off of those, so definitely a big talking point there. Texas Tech played a more physical game, and all these reasons are things that the Zags pointed to after today's loss.
there were some timely turnovers here and there, so that's probably the biggest you know difference in the game was us not getting them to turn the ball over and them forcing us into a couple. They did a good job defensively, uh, being handsy on, on the ball, and, and we were not strong enough. And, and um, I think they were they they hit some big shots at the end too, and and uh, that's why we lost. Yeah. Um, they were just really handsy, and they did a, a uh, good job to kind of taking um, advantage of the physicality that they don't call as many fouls in the NCAA tournament. So just briefly, just to recap, uh, Gonzaga is going to be looking pretty different next year. Josh Perkins, Geno Crandall, Jeremy Jones for sure leaving. As seniors, it's probably likely that Rui Hachimura and Brandon Clark also leave as well to join the NBA. So that leaves uh, Corey Kispert, Zach Norvell, and Killian Tilly. I'd be shocked if, Killy, uh, if, Killian, if Killian decides to leave. It also leaves the fact that Gonzaga is going to have a top five recruiting class. That is something the program has never had. Expect some transfers to make an immediate impact on this team as well. This team is looking for an experienced point guard now that Josh is leaving. Reporting outside the Honda Center, I'm Brett Hunter Green. He's Karthik Venkatraman from Two Sports. Thank you both so much. Well, Zach Nation obviously very heartbroken as well tonight. The run for the title ended earlier than they had hoped for. Nonetheless, the Bulldogs had a historic season, and Krem 2 Shayna Waltower was on the campus tonight with reaction from fans and students. Yeah, not the ending we all were hoping for for this game, and neither were many of the students that were here today. I'm here just outside of Cataldo Hall, which is where many students were gathered watching this game on the big screen, rooting for the Zags all day for the past several hours, including. And they were sitting in front of the screen just cheering from the very beginning of the game. They were all looking and excited, and you could feel all of that emotion that was inside here. But then as the game continued on and that gap started to increase a little bit more is where a bit more of the tense emotions started to build up and if there's one word I'd use to describe this game it would be stressful I think we all felt the stress of this game as it continued to build up and so did many of the students inside as well I was really stressed this entire game but I got really hyped up and excited every time we came close to tying it up or when even when we did tie it up those were really exciting moments we're all freshmen so we were kind of hoping our first year we would go to the final four and we've been doing so good this season it's kind of heartbreaking that we've gotten this far and lost. So again, not the ending that we all were hoping for, but it was still something that brought us all together for at least a couple of hours. Reporting on Gonzaga University's campus, Shana Waltower, Krem 2 News. Even though the season is over, it was a spectacular one either way, and people near and far are hurting for the Zags but congratulated them for their tremendous season. Our very own Brenna Green tweeted a quote from head coach Mark Few, and he said they were a joy to coach. That's why it hurts. There's a lot of love in the room. Former Krem reporter Evan Klosky zeroed in on Perkins, saying hate that Perkins ends his collegiate career like that, but he's one of the all time winningest players in the NCAA's history. Amazing career and that it was Evan. From one Spokane team to another, the Spokane Indians tweeted, we're always very proud of the way you represent our city. And future Zag Drew Timmy is all positive, saying, what a great season, proud of my family, adding, just know we will be back. Gonzaga's president, Thane, uh, Thane McCullough, also focusing on the positive, tweeting, so proud of our Zags. Thank you for an amazing season. And last but definitely not least, Jimmy Kimmel, he had something to say as well. Congratulations to my new friends at Gonzaga on a great season. Imaginary or otherwise, I have grown very fond of you. Thanks so much, Jimmy, and we hope you come to campus to check it out still. March Madness isn't over. You can still catch games on Krem 2. Tomorrow, Kentucky will play Auburn, who upset overall Number one seed, North Carolina. This game is in Kansas City at 220. Then Duke will take on Michigan State in D.C. at 505. While many of you have been watching March Madness inside, hopefully you got to go outside to enjoy the sunshine, at least just for a little bit. But the future has more rain in store. Michelle Boss is in the Weather Center to break it all down for us. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Good news is the rain's going to take a couple of days to get here, several days, in fact. So we do still have a couple of nice days to enjoy. Taking a look at our satellite and radar picture, all is quiet across the inland northwest. Just kind of ignore uh, kind of those flashes of green, a little ground clutter there, but no precipitation across the inland northwest and mostly 
clear to partly cloudy skies, so pretty quiet out there. Nice temperatures as well, not cooling off too fast. Still 46 in Spokane, the lower 40s in Coeur d'Alene. It is going to be a little bit chillier up north, likely seeing those temperatures go below freezing in places like Deer Park and Sandpoint, but elsewhere staying above freezing overnight, places like Moses Lake and Lewiston. Next 12 hours look like this as temperatures fall into the 30s. We'll be bottoming out around 35 degrees early tomorrow morning and looking for partly sunny skies tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures pretty close to where they were today. Light winds and a high of 56 degrees. All right, we want to take you live downtown now. A beautiful look at downtown Spokane, and it was a great sunny day in the inland northwest and a perfect time to check out opening weekend of the skate ribbon at Riverfront Park. For the last two weeks, the City Parks and Recreation Department converted the ice rink into a smooth skate rink. The skate ribbon is open for roller skating, roller blading, and scootering. Starting tomorrow, admission and or excuse me, starting today rather, helmets and rentals are free and it's free all season. You can rent roller skates and scooters or bring your own. We're following a developing story out of North Idaho. Ron Stone, a fifth grade teacher at Hayden Meadows Elementary School, was arrested last night for child sex abuse charges. Stone was arrested and charged for two counts of inappropriate conduct with a minor and one count of sex abuse of a child under the age of 16. The Coeur d'Alene School District was informed of the arrest late yesterday and sent out an email to families and staff. The alleged victims are not students in the Coeur d'Alene School District. Stone has been placed on administrative leave until further notice. Well, Washington could be getting an official state dinosaur under a propo proposal from lawmakers in Olympia. Earlier this week, a bill was introduced that would make the Sushasaurus rex the state dinosaur. Researchers believe the dinosaur lives somewhere between Baja California, uh, Mexico and Northern California. The fossil may have been moved north to Washington during the late Cretaceous period. Though it doesn't yet have a state dinosaur, Washington State's official fossil is the Columbian mammoth. 